I've said it time and time again that Uru Kenyatta knew, even before we went for elections, that Raila Odinga had already lost. And for the first time, I have found a small piece of evidence that confirms this. Moses Kuria yesterday was chairing a public service meeting in his office, where even CS Ndungu of Treasury and a few permanent secretaries, of course, were present. And as Moses Kuria brought the meeting to an end, he made the erroneous mistake of exposing that then Cabinet Secretary of Treasury Ukuri Atani had visited Ruto's residence in Karen to discuss the state of the nation's finances with Moses Kuria and Dungu. And he did this visitation prior to Raila even filing the Supreme Court petition. Just listen to this. Uh, you recall, uh, CS, we were with you in the economic uh, think tank. You remember the meeting we had in, uh, in the office of the then uh, president-elect? in Karen, before the, actually even before the determination of the case at the uh, Supreme Court. And we met for 14 hours, from morning to around midnight. And we looked at, uh, I think, Ukuri Atani came and some of the people who are here, came, the Musa Kedaji, you are there. And we looked at the issues. So when, why I'm saying this? When people look at the issues we are grappling with, I want to assure you, I was not a minister. He was not a minister. We were just think tank, thinkers. Nothing that is happening today for us is accidental. Everything. If it is our programs, they are there in the plan. We develop them in the plan. If it is a difficult decision, that is the day we decided no more subsidies. So it is very obvious that from the get-go, everyone in Uru Kenyatta's camp and administration knew that Raila Odinga had lost. Why would a sitting CS be going to Ruto's residence in Karen? It's because they had the intel of who was going to lead this nation. And they all lied to Raila Odinga that he was the one. So in this video, I want to look at some of the three major reasons and indicators as to why Uru Kenyatta is not a friend to Raila Odinga. But before we do that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, there's three main reasons why I'm saying that Uru Kenyatta knew of Raila's loss and he did nothing to help him. He actually betrayed the man. The first reason is that Uhuru Kenyatta, and let me not even say Uhuru Kenyatta, any sitting president of the Republic of Kenya receives NIS reports on a daily. The only exception is when the president refuses to read that report. But the truth of the matter remains that that report, the NIS briefcase, is always going to be on the president's desk. I am sure as early as 7 a.m. today, it was sitting on President Ruto's desk and he has read it by now and it has been returned back by the NIS agents. Those reports go far and beyond what anyone can think about. There is nothing that the media can ever break. There is no story, however juicy, that touches on national security, that NTV, Citizen, KTN, or all these people can break that President Ruto does not already know about. Sometimes they are just courteous enough to pretend to be shocked, but they know all these things. Uru Kenyatta was receiving polls from NIS. Forget polls from all these fake pollsters who are being paid to drive a narrative. And he knew Raila has lost and he did nothing. He could have even come out as early enough as uh, the first poll he received to say, let us back Musale Mudavadi, let us back Kalonzo, let us back somebody else. The numbers we are seeing, Raila cannot make it. But he lied. He just told Raila, yeah, Utapita. And the second reason, after knowing all this that Raila has lost, he did not do anything to help Raila Odinga until when it was too late, to the point that he was now just pretending to look like he was kind of helping. Huh? There was no real help. You know, there are people when you're in crisis, they don't help you. But as you're about to come out of that crisis or when the situation is dire, nothing can be done, is when they step in to pretend, oh, I can do this and that for you. But truly, they aren't really your friends. Let me give you a classic example of what I'm saying. In the last election of uh, 2017, Chris Musando was kidnapped. His hand was chopped off in order to access a certain room where some servers were kept and the access to the room was his fingerprints through biometric access. They got in there and they did what they had to do. Philomena Mwilu, the Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Kenya, her bodyguard was shot. That was a message, a warning to the Supreme Court that you'd better give a good verdict this second time around because remember Maraga nullified the first election. That was how Uru Kenyatta's camp was treating the last election. It was Liwe Liwalo, he must be declared President of the Republic of Kenya. Did you see that kind of urgency during the time of Raila Odinga? This urgency started 
after <laughs> all the votes have come in at Bomas of Kenya, Wafula Chebukati, he thought ahead and all these details were being projected in the IBC websites. Anyone with a calculator could begin calculating who the president is. The international media and observers had already done their own math and uh, Ruto was declared president already. To, they were just waiting for the formal announcement from Wafula Chebukati. And then that is when Uru Kenyatta sends the solicitor general, the inspector general, his chief of staff, and a bunch of other people to just go and corral uh, Wafula Chebukati to declare that no one has been able to reach 50% and we should go back to elections. When that failed, now they sent Rafael Tuju and Amos Wako to go sing the same tune to Wafula Chebukati. So this showed lack of urgency. The same kind of urgency that was there when Uru Kenyatta was in the ballot in 2017 was not there when Raila was running in 2022. So Raila was definitely played in my opinion. That's just my take guys. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. In the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.